Ulysses' troops diminished to a mere size. The black ships beat their way northward from the land of the Cyclopses. And Ulysses, ignorant of the mighty curse that the giant had fastened upon him, was beginning to hope that they might have fair sailing the rest of the way home. So eager was Ulysses to get home, he took the helm and kept it night and day. He would not take any rest, for he had not seen his family or Ithaca for ten years. At the end of the third night he saw... Look! In the distance, a great wall of bronze preventing our passage. It could not stretch across the entire sea. Let us try to sail around it. He began to sail along the wall, trying to find his way around it. Soon they came to a gate. It opened and Ulysses sailed in. Wow, this wind is strong! Wow. <laughs> it was a great howling wind. The sun was blown out like a candle. Everyone lost consciousness. Poseidon had guided their ships to the island of Aeolus, keeper of the winds. Ages before, the gods had become fearful of the strength of the winds, so they decided to tame them. Zeus and Poseidon floated an island on the sea and surrounded it with a huge bronze wall. They put a mountain on the island and hollowed it out until it was a huge stone dungeon. Into the hollow mountain they stuffed the winds and appointed Aeolus as their jailer, and the winds were held captive. Whenever the gods wanted a storm, they sent a message to Aeolus, who would draw his, who would take his cane and stab the side of the mountain, making a hole big enough for the wind to fly through. If the north wind were wanted, he stabbed the north side of the mountain. If it's east and its east slope for the east wind, etc. When the storm was done, Aeolus would whistle the storm home. It was in the castle of Aeolus that Ulysses and his men found themselves when they awoke. Excuse me, sir, but would you happen to know where we are? You are in my castle. My name is Aeolus, Keeper of the Winds. I am fat and I love a good time. I love to eat, drink, fight, play games, and listen to stories. I have 12 children, six boys and six girls. They ride the winds and control the weather for each month. You are in my castle. The question is, who are you, uninvited strangers? I am Ulysses and I'm trying to return to my home of Ithaca. Well, Ulysses, I think I have heard about you before when, your aunt, when my aunts and uncles were talking about you on Mount Olympus. Weren't you at Troy? Yes, as a matter of fact, I was. Well, then you should have a good story to tell me. If you can tell me a story full of fighting, blood, gore, and trickery, I will help you return to your homeland. Do you have a tale to tell? Yes, I do have a tale to tell for those who can listen. Pass the wine. Ulysses told of all his adventures. Aeolus laughed at the tricks played in the blood and gore. <laughs> well, Ulysses, you have made me you have made me laugh so well, and you have told me the best story I have heard in ages. For that, I will help you get you back to your homeland. Thank you very much, your fat highness. I am eternally grateful. <laughs> Alias took the men out into the night. He took a bag and they went to the mountain. To the mountain. There Alias jabbed the mountain. Into the bag he put the north wind, South wind. And the east wind. This is the north wind, the south wind, and the east wind. Only for emergencies. If a pirate should chase you or a storm should follow you. I will send the gentle west wind guide you all the way to Ithaca. But make sure, strap that bag to your mast and guard it with your life and your sword. Do not let anyone touch it, even your crew, and do not sleep, for something might happen to it.
Thank you, Elias, and I will never let anything happen to it. No one chewing gum. Stop. Chew gum. The ship sailed off into the night, everyone clean, full of food, and happy. They sailed eastward, the gentle west wind filling their sails. Soon they were beyond the bronze gate. Boy, am I tired. This is my ninth night of sitting up awake. I could go and watch, Captain. No, I... Lando! Lando! It is the island of Ithaca, our home. I see my castle. Yay! Oh! We could be home within the hour. It could not hurt if I took a short nap. We're almost home. So Ulysses fell into a well-deserved sleep. Hey, look, the captain's asleep. Now's our chance to get a look at that bag. Just then Poseidon, seeing their luck, swam up next to them invisibly and clinked his golden armlets. The men heard the clinking and thought it was from the bag. Do you hear that? Those are coins, heavy golden coins, clicking against each other. There must be a fortune in that sack. Yes, a fortune that should be on to all of us. We share the danger. We should share the loot. It is true that he has always been good to us shared the spoils of Troy. Yes, that was then. Why, does not he, why doesn't he buy the second treasure? Alias scared to him. And we know how rich he is. Alias scared to him as his guest gift. And he should share with us. He never will. Whatever's in that bag, he does not want us to see. Did you not observe how he has been guarding it? All these nights and all these days? Standing there always eating and drinking where he stands? Never sheathing his sword? It is in his sheath now, and his eyes are closed. Look, he sleeps like a baby. I doubt anything can wake him. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Are you out of your mind? Yes, I am in mind with curiosity. I'm in my with cold fever. If you must know, Lucy lies asleep. The sword sleeps in his sleep. Do it in this bag. Wait, I'll help you. But you must give me half. I can't get it. This wire's magic. Then we'll do it this way, ripping it. The wind whirled the ship in all directions. It was spinning like a cork in a whirlpool. Just then, the keeper of the wind's whistle was heard far off in the distance. The raging winds turned around and went home. Ulysses awoke from his sleep to find the blue sky black and his home island dropping far out of his sight. The ship was a wreck and the crew was flung about the deck like dolls. The ship was hurled back to the island of the winds. Ulysses left his crew back on the beach and went up to see Ilias. What happened? Why are you back? I was betrayed by sleep and then by a greedy crew. We were, we were almost home. We were so close we could see the smoke from our own chimney. I warned you, I warned you not to let anyone touch that bag. 
And you were right, a thousand times right. Be generous again. Be generous again, please. And lend me the west wind, just until I get home. I promise I will do everything you bid. I'm sorry. No one can help someone who the gods detest. And the gods detest you, Ulysses. Leave, take your crew, leave this island, and never return. Ulysses gathered his weary men and sailed away. The sea was sluggish. A heavy calm lay over the harbor. They had to row with the broken stumps of oars. Ulysses, heartbroken, almost dead with grief, tried to hide his feelings. He stood on deck, barking orders. Making them mend the sails, patch hull, rig new spars, and keep rowing. He took the helm himself and swung the tiller pointing eastward home, which once again lay at the other end of the sea.